Hydrogen is getting a lot of attention these days, and we've got a, you know, several varieties of it. Uh, green hydrogen is made with electricity and water and through electrolyzers. Uh, blue hydrogen is made with natural gas, and the CO2 is, is captured and sequestered underground. But now we've got a new color of hydrogen, aqua. And I'm gonna to talk to uh, Professor Harry Riedenberg, who is uh, with the Haskane School of Business at the University of Calgary. So welcome to the interview, Harry. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. Well, Harry, I have to tell you, uh, aqua uh, hydrogen is new to me. So maybe could you give us a, a bit an overview about what that is? Okay, aqua hydrogen is actually a term that uh, I and my co-authors came up with in this uh, journal article in the International Journal of Hydrogen Energy, and it is uh, hydrogen, zero carbon hydrogen produced from uh, oil or gas uh, reservoirs, uh, leaving the uh, carb, the CO2 underground. And it's, that it's a new technology that was developed at the University of Calgary by Dr. Ian Gates at the engineering school. And it is uh, being commercialized by a company called Proton Technologies Canada. So it produces hydrogen to the surface and through a palladium membrane technology, it leaves the CO2 underground. So it's zero carbon, uh, which is like green hydrogen produced from renewable energy, but it is produced from fossil fuels rather than from renewables, uh, which is more like the blue hydrogen, which is why we came up with the term aqua. Now, one of the issues around hydrogen is cost. So blue hydrogen is much less cost than green hydrogen, which is still quite expensive to produce. But my understanding is that aqua hydrogen is actually pretty cost effective as well. Exactly. Yeah. In terms of the cost comparisons, and essentially I'm an economist by, by training, uh, blue hydrogen is somewhere between a dollar to two dollars per uh, um, US dollars per kilogram. Uh, green it ranges uh, from two twenty-five up to seven dollars or so, and the aqua hydrogen that we're talking about is considerably lower. It comes in at around twenty-five cents uh, per U U.S. cents per kilogram, and the reason for that is uh, it uh, is it, it is a transformative technology. It's not doing something after the fact, which is what blue hydrogen does. Blue hydrogen produces hydrogen from natural gas or from any other kind of fossil fuel, then captures the CO2 and injects it underground. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of cost. Uh, the, the, the new technology we're talking about, uh, aqua hydrogen, uh, uses spent oil fields. Most oil fields, when they're done, they're not really done. There's lots of oil left in there, uh, and there's water underground there. And uh, it uses something called the combustion technology, which some people may uh, have heard of. It's been around for quite some time, uh, and, and it's been done by other companies. But basically what it does, it uses the oil underground as a fuel for the process, so you're not injecting energy from the surface. Now, uh, if, if I understand your article correctly, this technology can actually be applied to the oil sands as well? Yes, it's uh, essentially any uh, fossil fuel reservoir can be used. Uh, it's being uh, tested right now, and it is in the it's in a pilot stage right now. It's not commercial yet. It hopes to be soon, but it's being tested uh, in Carrobert, Saskatchewan, which is not oil sands, but it's it's heavy oil, uh, and uh, but it it can, it can be used with uh, with oil sands, with bitumen, as well as heavy oils and and any other type of fossil fuel. Well, that that's that's fascinating. And um, so, where where what are the plans here? I, I mean, the company obviously uh, hopes to be uh, into commercial production fairly soon. Uh, is this something that we're going to see a huge expansion of? I mean, is this you know because we're talking about hydrogen? The Alberta government has a hydrogen strategy. The Canadian government has a hydrogen strategy. The estimates are that about one third of our economic activity can't be decarbonized with electricity. We'll need hydrogen. So is, is this a big thing or is this going to be a niche market? Well, I think hydrogen is a big thing. And I think you've already put your finger on it. Basically, decarbonization largely means electrification of a lot of things, but not everything can be electrified. Uh, long distance uh, trucking, long distance shipping, air travel, all those things cannot really be effectively done with batteries because you just need to charge too frequently. You can't hold enough, it's too heavy. So hydrogen is ideal for that. And there's a lot of talk of hydrogen but people don't really often talk about low carbon hydrogen. And uh, currently 95% of hydrogen is produced with carbon emissions. So even though it's, 
it doesn't produce any uh, any greenhouse gas emissions in use as a fuel. The production of it does uh, emit uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So the key is those three, the green, blue, or we call aqua hydrogen as low carbon uh, production uh, technologies of, of hydrogen. But Harry, uh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, do, does this uh, type of hydrogen production require uh, fairly new fields, like new discoveries, or can it be produced in spent fields, spill fields that are you know, already near the end of their productive life? It, it's the latter. It can be uh, used in any kind of fields because it's, uh, there, and there's lots of oil left in, in abandoned fields. So it's actually very interesting as a technology for looking at uh, abandoned oil fields as well. So uh, it, it's, it's any type of fossil fuel reservoir can be used for this. And, it, and the, one of the keys is it, uh, from the pilot studies, at least it suggests that all of the carbon can be kept underground, um, which compared to blue hydrogen is not the case. Blue hydrogen can only take care of um, maybe 85% of the, of the CO2, and there's a certain amount of leakage, 10 to 15% of, of that, which is not the case with this. Now, uh, we would be remiss, given that you're a scholar, uh, if we didn't talk about the basics of hydrogen as a carrier of energy. Do you want to give us just a, a sort of a brief overview of that, please? Well, hydrogen is, is not a primary fuel. It's not oil, gas. It's not solar or, or, or wind. It's a carrier. It's a secondary source. So its use is primarily as a fuel. And when you fuel a, a truck or a, a a, uh, a ship with it, it emits nothing in the process. Nothing comes out of the tailpipe uh, that, is, uh, that is a greenhouse gas. Uh, so the only issue there is with, with the production of the hydrogen. And, and that's what the concern is. But there's a lot of talk about hydrogen and most people forget that today, 95% is produced, the hydrogen that is, is produced with, with emissions. And so the, the three technologies that, we're, that we looked at in that, uh, in that paper were low carbon, or zero carbon uh, technologies. And uh, is, it, is it a place right now? Is it happening right now? Very much so, but we have to look at all of those. Renewables has the green hydrogen has a lot of opportunity as well, but it's probably a decade away from, uh, from reality um, because what, what are the opportunities there? As we scale up with renewables, uh, the cost will come down and there's also the surplus uh, energy that's produced when there's no demand for it in the middle of the day or wind in the, in the middle of the night. So you can use that to produce hydrogen as well. But all these technologies are fairly early stages of, of development. All of them will need further development and it'll be a rivalry between those different technologies. Harry, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for your insights. Okay, thanks very much, Markham. Bye-bye.